Here's a file of data that we're going to use in a different video. But I want to talk about the difference between formatted and unformatted input. So this is clearly data that's numerical and that I suppose we would generally want to read as numbers, maybe ints, maybe floats. And that means if we wanted to read this data, whether it, we we're reading it from the user or from a file, we would want to ignore all of the irrelevant formatting information. So often when you make a file full of numbers, you fill it up with formatting like this. So you line the numbers up to a particular column or something. And we know already that if we use a function like scanf with percent %d, so if I write something like this, and then I give it some value to read it into, um, scanf will read the next number available, skipping over any white space that's necessary. And that's called formatted input, because our goal is to extract meaningful numerical data from this soup of characters. If I wanted to read this character by character, what I would be reading aren't a, the, isn't the number six and then the number 10. It would be the character code for the digit six, then a space, then a space, then a few more spaces, then the character code for the digit one, the character code for digit zero, and the character code for a new line. And then I'd go down to the next line, I'd start over again. Um, and that's unformatted input because I just get the characters in the file. I don't really get to specify any particular meaning for them. I mean, I could then convert them to numbers myself, I guess, but I'm just reading the file character by character. And that's one thing. And when we're reading numbers, pretty much we always use f scanf or scanf because it's designed to help us do that for formatted input. What about text? Here's a file full of text. Um, and we can see it's got uh, more than one word per line in general. Uh, and there's some lines, like this last one, that end in a bunch of spaces. Uh, and our question is, I guess, if we're going to read text, do we want to read it in a formatted sense? That is to say, only extract the words or the characters that correspond to letters or something. Or in an unformatted sense, where you get every single character back. Um, and one thing to note in particular is, notice how the line numbers stop at 3. The file ends at the end of line three. There is no line four. The very end of the file is right here after this chain of spaces. So what I'm going to talk about in this video um, are three different ways of reading text, of which the first two are unformatted input. So the first one is a function called fgetc. And fgetc is the file analog of getchar. Uh, and actually, I'm going to start by pretty much writing the getchar loop that we wrote all over the place earlier this semester. So when you call fgetc, you give it your file pointer, and it reads a single character from that file. And then, in earlier in the semester, we did something like this. We kept reading as long as we did not see the hash symbol. Now, that's not going to work because we don't necessarily assume that every file contains a hash symbol. We do know that every file ends eventually, but not necessarily with a hash symbol. And then we do some work. I guess I'll just print out the character. So I print out character, and then I'll print it in square brackets, just like we've done in the past, so that we can see every single character clearly, even if it's a new line or something. OK, and I'll print ch. Uh, and then, of course, I queue up my loop for the next iteration. OK, so what do we do here? I want to keep reading until I've read every single character in my input file. But how do I do that? And you might also notice I'm, we've learned about the type char, and yet for some reason I'm storing the result of fgetc in an int. Well, that's strange. And I mentioned there was some confusion about int versus char for characters last week. And it turns out it ties into this. In fact, all the time we spent using ints for characters was sort of foreshadowing this moment. Let's go back over here. So I know when the file is over. In my text editor, I can you know, walk, I can scroll through the file, and I can keep going, and I can notice that I can't go past this point here. So therefore, the file ends. There's a very concrete point at which the file is over. It contains all of these characters, and that's it. So I shouldn't need there to be a hash symbol in the file to know that it's over, unlike with, with what we did with getchar earlier in the semester. The problem is, when I'm reading the file one character at a time, how do I know that it's over? fgetc's job is to read one character and return it to me. And we know that every possible character 
code could be in the file. Even weird binary characters, non-printable things, including stuff like the null terminator. There are files that could contain that character. So any valid char value could appear as a legitimate character in the middle of my file. But fgetc needs some way of telling me that the file is over. And it can only do that with a return value because I'm not passing in a pointer to anything but my input file. So what do I do? Well, it turns out that the option is because every valid char value could be in the file and be a valid return value for fgetc, fgetc just doesn't return a char. It returns an int. And its return value will be either a character code, if it read a character from the file, or a special value that doesn't correspond to any char value. And it's a named constant in the standard library. And it's abbreviated EOF, which stands for end of file. And to be clear, this is actually an int. It's an int value that doesn't correspond to any valid char. So it's outside the range of char. Uh, and uh, that means that if fgetc returns it, you know that the file is over because there's no way that this was a valid character that it read from the file. So it's just a number, but we refer to it by its name because theoretically the standard library could define it to be something else. We don't care what its numerical value is, not unlike a lot of the other characters that we deal with. So another thing to keep in mind is that this is a value that only works if you are working in type int. If I assigned uh, the result of fgetc to a char, I wouldn't be able to properly detect EOF necessarily. Okay, so um, in this case, I'm saying, well, ch is not equal to eof, and I just read each character one at a time and stop as soon as fgetc returns that special marker that tells me that the file is over. If I keep calling fgetc after it's returned eof, it'll probably just keep returning eof. Uh, so it's not, there's no benefit really to me doing that. All right, so here it is, reading every character of the file, raspberry there, and then it's, I see the new line, then pear, space, pineapple, and then a whole bunch of extra spaces because we know in unformatted input, those spaces are read in just like anything else. And then a new line, and then the word lemon, and then the word grapefruit, and then a whole ton of extra spaces. And notice how at the very end, there isn't a new line in the file. The file just ends. It never gets to line four. It just ends. So this basic loop, which is the variant of the get char loop that we already saw before midterm one, um, is one way of reading every single character in the file in an unformatted way. And as it happens this year for our assignment five, this likely is the easiest way of getting that assignment done. The other methods we're going to cover today are either a little bit more complicated and therefore maybe not worth it, or actively would sort of get in the way. They would actually make your life harder if you use them. So that said, let's talk about the other two methods because they'll help with labs and they'll help with um, exams and things. So uh, we can read one character at a time with fgetc. That reads a single character from the file. But often we have data that is line oriented. I want to read one full line of text at a time. I still want unformatted input. That is, it's still important to me that I get all the spaces and even that new line at the end. But I want to read one line at a time. And it turns out that there is a function called fgets, which reads an entire line into a string, hence the letter s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, an array to store my string. I'm going to give it size 100. Now, keep in mind that if I want to read a line of text from the file, I suppose it's possible that a single line of my file has more than 100 characters. Or actually, because my uh, array has size 100, if it's a string, I can only store 99 actual characters in it because I need to leave space for that null terminator. So I create an array of some size, and then I want fgets to read me a line. But before I've even seen that, maybe we should be clear that because the array has a fixed size, no matter what size I give it, I guess there's a chance the line is too long. But fortunately, fgets has been designed to be secure against that problem. If the line is too long, fgets will still only read the first, in this case, 99 characters. It won't read past the end of the array. If it did, we'd have a real problem. And in fact, if you've never seen this notation before, fgets, whereas fgetc and fprintf and fscanf look a bit familiar, it's for a reason. So fprintf is the file version of printf. fscanf is the file version of scanf. fgetc is the file version of getchar. But fgets is the file version of what? Well, it turns out there actually is a function just called gets. Or I should say there was. There was a function just called gets. 
But it was considered to be insecure, and it was removed from the C language. It was deprecated. And the reason was it was possible with get s to run past the end of an array. If the line that it read was too long, it would walk past the end of an array into unknown territory. And that, that actually caused a whole bunch of serious computational security problems. It turns out that security attacks were able to use get s in poorly written old C code to mount all sorts of nasty attacks um, that would result in things like uh, private information being revealed or modifying a program to allow malware to get into a machine. And so we do not use get s. Get s was removed. F get s, however, is secure because F get s is sure to never walk past the end of the array. You might be thinking, wait a minute, why is get s so different from F get s? They're supposed to be sort of two sides of the same coin. Yeah, good question. I want to know that too. Um, so just bad design on the part of the people designing the library. Okay, so what, how does fgets work? Okay, well, we call fgets. We pass in as our first argument the array that we're going to use to store the line, as our second argument the size of that array, and then as our third argument we pass in a file to read from. And I'll just start by reading one line. The line is, and they'll put the line in square brackets, there we go. We'll try running that. All right, the line is raspberry. And you can see that it's actually including that new line character at the end of the line. That actually gets included in my line array, which is fair enough, because I'm, I'm reading in an unformatted sense, and so I care about all the new lines in the file. As an experiment, let's see what happens if I make the line array way too small. So I only make a line array of length 5. That's not really very helpful, but what happens if I do that? What happens if I'm trying to read um, more data in my line than my array can hold? Well, fgets knows the size of the array, and so it stays ahead of that. So the array has size 5. That means that if it's a string, it can only hold at most four actual characters. And as you can see, fgets only reads four. And if you want it, and that means if you have a situation like this where the line is too long and it gets cut off, you have to call fgets again to get the rest of the line. In this case, the line is actually going to need three tries to get the whole thing. So we'll try that. Okay, so here I read the first bit of the line, rasp, then bear. And then when I finally get to the end of the line, notice that fgets does still stop at the end of the line. So in general, if you give fgets an array, fgets will stop either when the array is full or when it's reached um, the end of a line. And you can call fgets again to read the next line. So let's go back, let's be sensible and have a line array that can actually store a decent amount of data. Keeping in mind that maybe it's possible a line could have more than 100 characters, but fgets will still not go past the end of that array. Okay, so I'm back to reading the entire line. If I run it twice, I will then read two lines. So fgets can read every line in the file. I suppose our next question is, well, okay, so I guess I could use fgets in a loop to read all of the lines, but how do I know when the file is over? How do I know when I've read the last line? And just like with uh, fgets, there is a return value of fgets that can help us understand this. It's just really weird. So fgets has a return value that tells us whether it was able to read a line or not. And if it wasn't, that's because the file is over. What's strange about the return type of fgets is that it's a pointer. It's a char star, even though it doesn't need to be. So here is the return value of fgets. If fgets correctly read a line, it returns a pointer to your line array that you gave it. In other words, a pointer to something you already have. OK. If fgets failed to read a line, then it returns null. That's it. That's its return value. It's one of those two things. In other words, fgets is basically returning true or false in a really complicated way. So that's weird, but we can work with it. I, don't, I, I have no explanation. I've got no idea why the designers of the library dropped the ball on the file functions. It seems like there's a lot of problems here, a lot of loose ends they should have tied up. But it's too late now. That was, this was happening you know, 15 years before I was born, I guess. Um, so whatever, we're stuck with it. Um, Okay, so I call fgets, and if it reads the line successfully, it returns a pointer to my array, otherwise it returns null. In other words, as long as fgets is not returning null, there is a line that I can work with. So I will loop this way. And you might see this is a pretty weird format of a loop, because 
unlike a lot of the loops we've been writing, this while loop doesn't need an extra incrementation. This call to fgetS serves the purpose of both being part of our continuation condition because the return value, and also if the return value is non-null, that means fgetS right here already modified my line array. So there's no need for an incrementation a statement inside the loop body because the continuation condition actually does that for me, which is really weird. It's very creepy at first to see loops that look like this. Okay, and so now it's printing the line as there's raspberry and then pear, pineapple, and then lemon, grapefruit, and a bunch of spaces. And there's no new line at the end of this last line because in the file, there is no new line at the end of line three. The file just ends after all these spaces at the end of line three. Okay, so that's how we read a file line by line with fgetS. And there are a lot of occasions where line-based input is a big deal. So fgetS is really helpful for that. And for what it's worth compared to other languages, this syntax is disgusting. Um, many other languages have really nice, clean syntax for reading a file line by line because it's such a common operation. Um, by which I mean, I, I think uh, I write a whole ton of Python code, and I would say um, probably about seven out of ten of the new Python programs I write, within about five minutes, I am reading a file line by line. That is how common that operation is. And this is really ugly. And as I said, I think the designers of the language drop the ball a bit on the way they design some of the file functions. But fair enough, we have that feature. If we need it, you will find that you probably do need it for some labs uh, and exams. I don't think we need it so much for assignments in this course because assignment five doesn't benefit so much from this method. Although you could do it, you'll find that it's might, it might be easier just to use fgetsy to get each uh, character. Okay, but one other thing. So we can talk a bit about formatted input of strings. It, it's not that useful, and just I'll put a bookmark here for later. It will really not help you on assignment five. We're going to talk about reading things word by word. The definition of word used here is not the same one on the assignment, so it won't help to use fscanf. It's not a magic bullet, but we should know how fscanf works anyway. So one, one aspect of um, this input file where I suppose formatted input could be helpful is maybe I don't care about any of the spaces. I want the same um, effect that I get here, where I just want to pull out the useful data, just the numbers, for example. But I don't have numbers. I've got strings of text. What if I want to pull out each word? Well, fscanf can do that. Um, it can, we can use percent %s with fscanf to read one word, so up to uh, white space, basically, a sequence of characters uh, up to the first white space character. Now, in assignment five, the definition of a word is a bit different, so fscanf won't help with that. We can use fscanf and percent %s to read one word at a time. Just like earlier, though, what if um, words are longer than the array that I create? So here I made an array of length 100 to store my word, and I think that should be enough. Um, but we know that, theoretically, there could be a word that's 4,000 characters long, and we need to make sure that we program defensively to keep fscanf from walking off the end of an array, because fscanf has no way of knowing the length of the array we give it unless we tell it what its limit is. So I'm going to read one word with fscanf. So I give my input file as my first argument. I then I'm going to use percent %s. But maybe we haven't seen this so much before. I'm going to actually put a number here, 99s. So it's a strange, uh, I guess it's not very congruent with fgets, but with fgets, uh, maybe we'll go back. With fgets, when I pass in 100, what I'm telling fgets is the array has 100 elements. So you can use up to 99 of them for characters because that last element has to be used for a null terminator. With fscanf, we, so fgetS, we tell it the size of the array. With fscanf, we tell it how many characters is it allowed to use. So 99, because the last character, the 100th character, is going to be the null terminator. So we have to put that number in there, or else fscanf doesn't know how long our array is and might walk off the end, which could be a security hazard. Okay, so I do this. I give it as the argument uh, word, and then I'll print out the word. The word is, and then I press page down. Yeah, that's a tradition. All right, so we'll try compiling and running this.
And the word is raspberry, and so it went and picked up that single word. And just like we've seen with scanf before and with other uses of fscanf, fscanf returns a numerical value, which is how many things was it able to read for me? Uh, and actually, before I try that, let's just see what happens if I give it an array that's too small. So suppose I make an array, in this case, I'll make the array of length six, and then I say percent five s. There are five usable characters in that array, because I have to, I have to leave one space for the null terminator. If I do that, then fscanf will stop early. So it stops raspb because it can't read any more than five things because I've told it that. So that's a security measure. I need to make sure I do that. And it will be considered in this course an error if you don't provide that number to fscanf. It's true that fscanf will work if you just write this. But if you do this, it doesn't know how long the array is. It'll just keep going forever. If the word is too long, it'll walk past the end of the array. And that is a security problem as well as, you know, probably causing the program to crash or something. Uh, okay, so we'll go back, actually, I guess we'll go back to the 99 version. There we go. Uh, and then we'll try reading all the words in the file. So I'm going to say, just like I would if when I was reading numbers with fscanf, I'll say while fscanf, well, I'm asking it to read me one thing, so one string. Every time it, I ask it, it should return how many things it was able to read. I want it to have said that it could read one thing. So I say, well, the, the return value is equal to one. And then I'll just say the word is, and I'll just print out the word. And there it is. It's read every single word out of the file. Notice that those square brackets are tight in each case, and that's meaning that it is not reading any of these spaces into the array. It is just skipping over them. It is ignoring them uh, completely as it skips between meaningful tokens. So that's an example of formatted input, because scanf is discarding irrelevant information as it scans through the file, not unlike what it would do in a file full of numerical data like this. So scanf is a great way if you happen to be reading a file and you know that your definition of a word is the same as scanf and you want to read word by word, fscanf is a great way of doing that. Make sure we include that uh, numerical thing in the specifier so that we don't run past the end of an array. On the other hand, because often we want to read files word by word, but we don't have the same definition of what a word is, fscanf isn't always all that helpful. It's a little bit too specific for a lot of things, especially for our assignment five. 